Okay, so this is question number 86 um, from page 319 from uh, the textbook Structure Analysis Hibbler by Hibbler, 8th edition. So we're given this question and we're asked to find the slope at point B and at point C. So we're asked to find theta B oops, and theta C. Okay, and basically, the if you get the moment diagram right, this should be no problem. Okay, so first of all, we have to make sure that we do get the moment diagram right. The moment in this case, if we draw a diagram over here, we have two uh, k going down force, and first of all, before we even draw the moment diagram what I try to do is I try to visualize how this beam uh, will take place or what we call the elastic uh, elastic curve so how will how will this beams deformed shape look like if we put some force here how will this beam um, look like when it's a little bit deformed so this is an exaggerated shape okay it doesn't really it doesn't really deflect that much but uh, it looks like this or in other words it looks like this image right here okay so we have this uh, linear curve that's how the beam will look if you put uh, some force here and it makes sense right because this is a fixed support there's moment going this way because to counteract the moment that's being created from this force and we have uh, X and Y but we're not concerned about that at the moment so that's the moment diagram so what is the moment at 15 feet well it's just uh, well what is the moment at at this point there's some moment here right there's no moment here at this point because a force is going at that point but uh, there is moment you know around this beam so there is zero moment here and there is 60 over here so this 60 because 2 times 30 gives us 60 but why is it negative instead of positive this is where uh, where this concept comes in where you have to analyze the elastic curve from the top or the bottom I stick to the pop uh, the top just like the professor but it's all up to you you know so at the top if there is compression then we know that then we have to assume that the moment that we, then we know it's not an assumption it's it's been proven then the compression is positive and if there is uh, tension at the top then the moment is negative okay so at the top compression gives us positive moment tension gives us negative and it's the reverse for bottom uh, for bottom compression gives us compression gives us negative moment and tension gives us positive moment so if we analyze it from the bottom so in other words how how this makes sense how we can make sense of it is if we look at this diagram and this is point B and this is point C or this is point C if we look at it from if if we looked at it from this point then we would be analyzing the top right if we looked at it from this point if we looked at it from this point then we would be analyzing it from the bottom and as you can see at the bottom it's going undergoing compression there's is this part is being compressed but if we look at it from the top this part is under tension see how it's just kind of like taking out it's it's been kind of stretched at the top but compressed at the bottom likewise or if you can even try this with a sponge if you take a sponge and you bend it you take a sponge and you bend it there will be compression and you bend it like this it'll go like it'll go like this 
and this is the compression and that is the tension if we look at it from the top tension and compression at the bottom so going back to this um, question we have tension at the top if we look at this part there's tension at the top and if there's tension at the top top tension moment is negative so that's how we know and the, the, even all these parts it's all tension every point from the top is tension that's why every every moment uh, from 0 to 30 feet is negative and it's linear because there's no uniform load or uh, triangular load systems all placed on the beam so that's how we have minus 60 2 times 30 is 60 but it's negative and 2 times 15 gives us the minus 30 okay so that's how we find the moment and it's linear and th this is zero because there was a force acting on it this force over here so moment is zero at that point so now we move on to the actual question which is actually the easier part the easiest part I should say because all you have to do now once the moment diagram is created that's why we have to emphasize our um, we have to make sure that we get the moment diagram correct because if we don't then we'll mess up the whole question but anyway moment area theorem that's what it's called moment area theorem right and what happens with moment area is that we take that's exactly what we do we just take the area of the moment EI diagram if you want to find the moment between or I should say if you want to if you if you want to find the uh, theta B if you want to find theta at B then we just have to simply take the area under uh, the uh, between points A and B on the moment curve but before I do that let me explain something else the theta B over here at point A over here at point A we have zero deflection and zero slope this is uh, true for all cantilever beams all cantilever beams have a uh, zero um, deflection and zero slope at the fixed support so if we were to draw a tangent at that point it would just be straight so that's tangent A and then we have uh, point B and point C on the elastic curve and if we were to draw a tangent on point B that's how it, this would look like and a tangent at point C this is how that would look like now tangent BA means the angle tangent the the angle the line tangent B makes the angle the line tangent B makes which is over here with respect to tangent A so that's how we get this notation tangent B with respect to tangent A likewise over here tangent C with respect to tangent A that's how this angle works and tangent C really is the same thing as tangent C A because this line is parallel to this line over here and uh, they're really just so that's a property this angle equals that angle so that's what this whole thing means in terms of the tangents and the theta ba that's really the only hard part about this question and the moment diagram but let's calculate theta b now so theta b if you want to find theta b we have to take the area so theta b is over here theta b is the uh, same thing as theta b a as you can see this these lines are parallel okay so theta b a is uh, same thing as theta b which is which is uh, simply the area under the moment ei di uh, diagram the area between a and b so this area over here which is simply 15 times minus 30 so 15 times minus 30 gives us area 1 and then we have area 2 which is 15 times 
the difference so what is this length over here that length gives us uh, minus 30 so 15 times minus 30 divided by 2 so this becomes uh, minus 225 and uh, 450 minus 450 which is uh, minus 675 over EI don't forget your EI okay so this is our answer you can calculate it out and you'll get the theta B theta C uh, very simple you just take uh, so theta C is the same thing as theta C A which is the angle between tangent C and tangent A or in terms of moment EI diagram the area between A and C so this whole area okay and that is equal to tangent or, or it's pretty very easy it's just uh, minus 60 which is this length so let me just make it a little bit neater so minus 60 times 30 which gives us the whole uh, area divided by 2 of course 30 times minus 60 over 2 gives us uh, 900 minus 900 EI so this is our angle what if we were asked to find theta BC which is our or theta theta CB sorry CB which is between these two points we can either take 15 times 30 over 2 or what we can do is take th this value theta C minus theta B and we will get the answer which is uh, I believe uh, 225 maybe yeah minus 225 over EI yep okay so that's how you find mo um, theta with respect to, uh, in terms of uh, using the moment area theorem and we'll do deflection uh, in the next video